This is a Rotke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rotke of Rotke Mods, and welcome to episode 6 of my 32-bit CPU Mac series. In this episode, I will be showing you how to max out your Mac Mini. With iMac users, I will put a link in the description for an iFixit guide, which will help you too. This episode, we will be upgrading and maxing out this Mac Mini as much as we can. First off, I will show you the parts. First off, we have a Core 2 Duo T7600, which was the fastest CPU supported by the chipset in this Mac Mini. In fact, it's faster than the top CPU that was available from the factory, the T7200, that was in the 2.1 Mac Mini. This chip runs at 2.33 gigahertz and is one heck of a CPU, but it is a little more pricey. In fact, it is like three times as expensive as the T7200, so we will be covering the price of the T7200 in this where it would cost between two and $15 on eBay. But the T7600 costs between 24-ish and $50 on eBay, depending on where you buy it from. If you want a good medium, the T7400 is a good processor to go for, and it runs at 2.16 gigahertz, I believe. Secondly, I will cover the SSD that I decided to put in here. I got this for free. This is actually the backup drive for my Mac Pro. It was the original Lion drive I had in the system, and I decided to take the drive that's in this and put it in the Mac Pro for my line drive. It is a 128 gig Kingston SSD now that is over five years old and is on its last legs, but it should work pretty well for the Mac Mini we are installing it into. Also, I have two modules of DDR2 memory. One of them is a gigabyte RAM from Hynix, where the other one is a two gigabyte RAM. This one's from a MacBook 5,2, and this one I bought off of eBay for $13. Oh, and I bought this T7600 for $29.95, just to let you know. And I'll also link the seller on eBay who specializes in upgrading Mac minis in the description below. Altogether, I spent around $42 to upgrade this whole system. Of course, the SSD was technically free. Anyway, this Mac Mini originally had 2 gigs of RAM, and it still currently does, but I've decided to match the two RAM modules with Hynix RAM. That's just because I like matching companies. You don't have to. If you already have, for instance, let's say 1 gigabyte worth of RAM, you only have to buy another 2 gigabyte worth of RAM, and it doesn't matter who it comes from, and they say it doesn't matter what speed. I recommend you running 633 megahertz, but they say it doesn't, so as long as it's DDR2 RAM, you might be okay. I would recommend the 633 megahertz though. Also, of course, we have the Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste, and we have these nylon screws with nuts that also came from the seller that sold me this. So in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to upgrade this system, and let's begin. Okay, to start off, we will need a putty knife. I would recommend a clean one, but I don't have one right now. You will need to sand the edges down some, and then we will be prying this open around the edges. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you don't mind marring the sides up. We insert the putty knife into the crack and push downwards. And then we lift upwards and twist sideways to pop up the tabs. And we do this all the way around until it comes loose.
once you have it loose, we can flip it around and lift the cover off. And there we have the cover. Now we will need to eject the Wi-Fi antenna. To do this, we need to squeeze these two tabs here and it will pop up. Don't squeeze too hard or you may break the tabs. You want to take this spring here and put it to the side so you don't lose it. Next we'll need a flathead screwdriver tip to remove this ribbon cable. We need to release the tabs right here and you need to be careful not to break this. We put it under the brown piece here and lift upwards. And then we can lift it out. If it doesn't come out all the way, we need to loosen it more and it will come right up. Now we need to spin it to the front and loosen this connector right here. Now they recommend to use a pair of pliers to do this, but if you're careful enough, you can just loosen it with your screwdriver, but don't break off the connector or the plug. And it's out. Now we need to remove screws here, 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 and here. You will need a number one Phillips head screwdriver to remove these. Also the screw that goes right here is the longest screw. So remember that when you are reassembling. Once you have those screws removed, you can carefully start lifting up on the assembly, not catching this Wi-Fi wire in the process, and carefully just lift it up. Clearing the wire, we will just clear it right off, and it is loose. Now we can see the main board. I would recommend you disconnect your Wi-Fi antenna before we continue. Now we will want to remove this connector here and this connector here. Once those connectors are removed, we will need a T10 Torx to remove this lug here. And we will put that aside. Now you will want to pull this part back while lifting up on the front of the board. You may need to pry on it some. And then it will lift right out. And you, then you just pull it forward. And it will separate from the back. And there's the board. Now here comes the challenging part. We will flip the board over and right here are four locking posts. To remove these we will need to squeeze the tips while pulling on the white pegs here. This is very fragile and these nylon pegs are very prone to breaking. Because of this, I went and bought a nylon screw kit to replace them. If you do not have a nylon screw kit, you will want to be super careful not to break these pegs if you plan on reusing them. But I'm not too worried about it because I have the kit. So squeeze these with a pair of pliers and pull here very carefully. Also, be careful not to mar the board or break anything off of it. 
Oh, and one more thing. Be careful when you are removing these pegs because they are spring-loaded and they will shoot, a bit, shoot out of there really quick. And if you're reusing them, you do not want to be losing the springs. Also, if you plan on selling the CPU or at least preserving it in case you ever want to go back to the original or something like that, you want to be doing cross pattern to remove them. Once you remove the CPU heat sink, do not completely remove it yet. You need to first release this connector right here to the thermal sensor. And here is your core duo. You will want to clean off the heat sink and remove this. To remove this, we need to put a flathead screwdriver into here and twist the lock to the left. until it is fully disengaged and then we want to lift the CPU straight up. Now here is a good time to show you the difference between a Duo and a Core 2 Duo. The Core 2 Duo is on the right. And the Core Solo is now on the right. We want to put our new chip in, taking mind where this area is right here which will match the area in the board right here. We drop it in carefully, lining up the pins, and it will drop right into place. And then we lock this back into place, twisting the screw back the opposite direction. You will want to rub down the CPU die with rubbing alcohol and the base of the heat sink. And now we will apply the thermal paste. Since this is a bare die, we will want to take a card, like a credit card or something, and smooth this out completely onto the die. When you are finished, it should look like this. You just need a thin layer, and if you would like to wipe the excess off of the CPU itself, that's fine, but considering that Arctic Silver 5 is not conductive, it's not that important. Now we can plug the heat sink back into the heat sensor and set the heat sink back on. If you have done the screw method, at the end it should look like this. Remember to tighten in a crisscross pattern. If you use your original pegs, you just need to line the holes up and push downwards until they click back in. So welcome to day two of filming. This is now my second Mac Mini. This is actually a whole new board from a parts Mac Mini. Um, I'm going to explain what happened. The part in the video where I said be very careful not to break anything off the board. I was a little too quick and excited to be doing this and didn't have the proper tools. So I ended up breaking this ceramic capacitor off right here and scraping the uh, tool across this trace right here which you can probably see in the earlier video where I was talking about putting everything pulling everything off and putting everything back in well needless to say the Mac didn't boot back up when I was finished because I pre-tested it because I was a little worried that it wouldn't work and it didn't though I did fix that board I am um, soldered a wire to the trace here to here and it powered back on. I also replaced the ceramic capacitor but I decided I might as well just get a new board for reliability but this is a um, cautionary tale here. Don't do a novice job like I did. This is the first time in years I've actually broken something trying to upgrade it. Many many years. Anyway, so let's get back to the video. Once you have everything reassembled, first things first, if you are doing the screw method, you want to make sure that the heat sink is nice and level, and you do not want to over tighten these screws. You just need to have them um, a little more than finger tight. Once you start feeling resistance, you want to stop. And of course you want to be tightening in a X pattern. And if you over tighten the heat sink, 
more than likely there will be nothing major that happens to the CPU. The Mac will just refuse to boot up. It will turn on, but it won't do anything and it will not post. So if that happens to you, just loosen the heatsink screws a little bit and try again. So for the next step, we will just be putting the board in and all the components that are needed to make it run. But we are not going to reassemble the Mac. Plus, we have to do this first before we upgrade to the newer EFI firmware of the 2,1. So I'll be putting the board back into the base and showing you what else you need to do for us to plug it in and test and make sure everything works. I have now gotten the board back into the base. I have not put any of the screws back in, including this standoff. I've reconnected the power button and the LED wire. And now we are just going to set the optical and hard drive assembly back onto the case and plug everything back up. And I'll be right back. Now I have everything connected, including the sensor on the front and the audio board on the back. Of course, there's still no screws in it. We are just putting it together to test it. And I will hook it up, and we will do our first boot up to see if it works. We are now hooked up. Let's turn the power on and see what happens. And it starts booting. And we are in Snow Leopard. Let's see if the CPU has recognized. And here we have it, the Core 2 Duo. Now in this step coming up now, if you've decided you do not want to upgrade past two gigabytes worth of RAM, you can stop here and put all your screws back together and reassemble the whole system. If you want to upgrade to three gigs worth of RAM, that includes the people who want the four gigs just to brag about it. But then again, even though the system says you have four gigs, remember it can only use three, so it's not worth doing. Just go with the three gig anyway. So if you want to do that, you need to keep your system apart for a bit longer and do this next step where we will be flashing the Mac Mini but I am going to do that in the next video. So in the next video, we will be flashing this Mac Mini to a 2,1. So stick around and thank you for watching. This has been a Rutke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods and welcome to episode six of my Mac Pro. I'm in the wrong series. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke. <laughs> Hello, I'm Greg Gretke. This is going to be a funny blooper reel. To remove this, we need to put a flathead screwdriver into here and twist the lock to the left. Once it is twisted, we want to lift the CPU straight up and twist the lock left. We are now hooked up. Let's turn the power on and see what happens. Nothing. 